they will have ingested today, but it is what it is. So I'm going to ask the sound people to help an old man out. And I'll have y'all home today by 5 o'clock. That's early for us, right? I want to invite your attention before I want to invite our attention to the gospel according to Mark. We are continuing our series of sermons around the general theme, the difference Jesus makes. This summer preaching series geared in two directions. One, it is to invite and encourage those who have been checking out this church thing and wonder for themselves if committing to the spirit of Jesus will make a difference in their life. I want to say the answer is yes. And I've been arguing for the past seven weeks why. It's also targeted towards those who have already made the commitment to the Spirit of Jesus, but life has been such that it's just not what it used to be for you. You don't feel like you used to feel. I want to tell you to hang on in there. Because it does pay to serve Jesus. We have walked through several texts and now find ourselves in the gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter, starting in the 30th verse. You shall have found it, say amen, and stand to your feet. To honor the reading of this portion of the scripture. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour now is very late. Send them away so they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something themselves to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? Read that again. Are we to go and buy 200 days worth of work and take amount of money and buy bread and give it to them to eat. And he said to them, how many loaves have you? Go and see. When they found out, they said five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green ground. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifty. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he took it up to lift, looked up to heaven, and blessed and broke the 
loaves, gave it to them, to his disciples, to set before the people. And he divided two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand. Five thousand men. Amen. If I had to give this sermon a title, I would say, Don't count God out. Don't count God out. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, why am you wrong? What I know you talk. What I have you gave. What I am Lord to me. Lord, I'm depending on you. Can't do nothing till you come. This is your service for asking in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. We have a seat in the presence of God today with the limited voice that I have. I want to make plain my assignment today. I want us to look at how assumptions govern our lives and limit our possibilities. I want us to take a look at how what we think often determines what we get. This text is one that is familiar to most who have been in church for any period of time. It is one of the several texts that talk about the feeding of the multitudes. I want to focus my efforts today on that part of the text that talks about how he took the bread and the fish. And I don't want to get happy with y'all and preach from the subject, God will provide. I know we all know that. I want to look at this text from the lens of somebody that sees in it an assumption that must be confronted. The text begins by showing us that Jesus greets his disciples who came back from their first missionary activity. Jesus then invites them to go with him away to a quiet place to get some rest. But because of the effectiveness of their ministry and the ministry of Jesus, the crowd would not let him rest. Folk kept on coming. Folk who were sick looking for healing. Folk who were wounded looking for deliverance. And Jesus had compassion on them and cut short his retreat and began to take care of the people. Aren't you glad that Jesus would change his agenda just to take care of somebody. It's amazing how sometimes those who are in church work get so caught up in the work that we forget the work is all about the people. I wish I had a witness here. If you got to go through five people just to get to the secretary, to talk to the deacon, to talk to the associate, to talk to the assistant, to talk to the first assistant, to talk to the pastor. Can I tell you, Jesus didn't put you through that. I wish I had a good day. It amazes me how we get so caught up in who we are Amen. and what we think we are. You never work a lot if you can't. 
big old plans. Y'all want to hear what I'm talking about? But we had our own assumption that we deal with every day. We assume stuff, even without having the factual information. Somebody here could have had a business a long time ago, but you assume because you don't have all the money you need, you can never get a business started. Y'all better talk to me. Assumptions in our community.
and show you that when you have God in your life, when you have the Spirit of Jesus in your life, Stand to your feet. And I have more voice. I'll teach you a little better, but not today. 